Gyarados didn't perform particularly well in Pokemon Yellow, so at the end of that video I asked the question of how it would perform in Pokemon Red or Blue. This difference in performance largely comes from its move pool, its starting move pool specifically. It was massively nerfed in Yellow version, but in Red it starts with Bite, a 60 power normal type move with a 30% chance to flinch, Dragon Rage, the only Gen 1 Dragon move that always does 40 damage, Leer, a move that is quite bad, and Hydro Pump, the strongest water type move in the game. So this is completely different than starting with just Tackle. Also, Pokemon Red's early game is quite a bit faster than Pokemon Yellow's. For example, there are less steps, less text, and no mandatory catching tutorial. You'll have noticed that I didn't use the Mart in Viridian City as well. That's because in Red, there are no potions available there. So I'll stop by the Mart in Pewter City when I get there. Gyarados speeds through Viridian Forest because there are patches of grass here that actually don't spawn encounters. Here's a map in case you're curious. Plus, the ones that do spawn encounters only do so 8% of the time, rather than 25% of the time like in Yellow version. Dragon Rage one-shots the mandatory bug catcher's Weedle, and I head to Brock's gym without healing. Why would I, after all? Because Brock's Pokemon both have less than 40 health, so while Hydro Pump is super effective, it does have the chance to miss, but Dragon Rage doesn't, and it's actually going to one-shot both of his Pokemon. I knock both of the rocks out in one hit, and that's it. Gyarados gets a time of 2 minutes and 15 seconds on Brock. That is 11 minutes faster than Yellow, and I also think it's my fastest Brock split ever in the history of the channel. Here's another advantage. Starting with so much PP and having to fight so few trainers is going to let me go on a rampage through all of Mount Moon without stopping at a single Pokemon Center. On the way, I stop to pick up the rare candy, and just north of it I grab the escape rope, which I normally pass by in yellow playthroughs, but today it's going to be useful to save about 5 seconds. In Cerulean City, the obvious choice is to face Misty. In yellow, I had to use Bide to make Misty consistent, but in red, I can just use Dragon Rage and consistently defeat her. Her Staryu does have 41 HP, it's so frustrating anyways, but her Starmie has 59, so it's a guaranteed 2 hit. With her defeated, I teach Gyarados Bubble Beam in the place of Water Gun, and then I go up against the rival. Oh, uh, I forgot to heal. At least I saved Pidgeotto's first. It uses Quick Attack, and takes Gyarados to 7 hit points. It doesn't go for the priority move again, and so I finish it off with Bite. Next is Abra. I, uh, one-shot it. Rattata's next, and Bubble Beam takes it out in a single hit as well. Last is Bulbasaur. I go for Dragon Rage, Bulbasaur goes for Vine Whip, and Gyarados survives with 4 hit points. So I knock it out, and that's it! I won! Alright, I guess I didn't need the heal after all. So I'm going to check in and compare the two games. Normally in yellow, I'm on Nugget Bridge at around 10 to 12 minutes, but in red, I'm here before 7 minutes. This is so much faster. Aiding my speed is the fact that I won't need to heal Gyarados for a while now. I actually healed in Cerulean City, and that was the first time in the entire playthrough. Along the way to Bill's house, I grab an Elixir after defeating the Hiker, and then later after I smash the final Lass, I grab an Aether. Now I've made it to Bill's house. Here I get another speed advantage over Yellow, because I can use the Escape Rope to teleport back to Cerulean City, saving about 5 seconds of walk time. Also, this is why I healed at this Poke Center earlier. While I'm back here, I might as well heal again. After all, I've got to defeat some more trainers. Gyarados smashes its way through the rocket, the junior trainer male with Raticate, and the junior trainer with three Pidgeys. And after all that, I arrive in Vermilion City. Here, I purchase three Repels for a rock tunnel, and I also pick up a couple super potions in case I need to heal later in the playthrough. On the SSN, I do the unthinkable. <laughs> I skip the uh, non-existent healing bed. No, uh, that's not the unthinkable thing I do. I skip the TM for rest. Because in red version, it's really not going to be as useful as it is in yellow. Plus, I already know that Gyarados won't be needing it. However, Body Slam is going to be useful, so I defeat the junior trainer and pick that up. Now, while I grab the rare candy and defeat the rival, let's discuss my overall plan for this red playthrough. I played so much yellow, and I've been really excited to play this game again, because it's actually quite different from yellow. When I was a kid, I played far more red and blue than I did yellow, specifically because I wanted to play through the game as quickly as possible, and yellow felt like a slog in comparison. Also, I hated that I couldn't pick my starter. I remember buying blue version off one of my older friends who was bored of it, just so that I could escape being forced into having a Pikachu. By the way, 
I have still got that copy of blue. Here it is. My plan for this game relates because I know how much harder yellow is, and so I think that in red I'm going to be able to squeeze by at nearly the lowest level. In yellow I had to do a lot of training with Gyarados to make some of the fights manageable, but here I don't think that that'll be the case. Up to this point in the playthrough, I've only fought one optional trainer. That's the guy that was blocking Body Slam. I'll keep track of the number of optional trainers I face as I go, and then in the end we can compare it to what I had to face in my yellow playthrough. At some point I'll have to use my rare candies as well, but I am going to wait as long as possible to do that, just to see how Gyarados manages this game. With the SSN behind me, I head to the Pokey Fan Club. I'm going to skip Surge until after Rock Tunnel today. After being given the bike voucher, I do some inventory management, I teach Geodude Dig, Oddish Cut, and then dig back to Cerulean. Yes, you can dig out of the Pokey Fan Club in red and blue, but you can't in yellow. Gyarados is so powerful that I make it through the Wrapping Lasses team without any issues. Also, the Pokemaniac isn't an issue either. Really, no one at Rock Tunnel is a challenge, so I make it to Celadon very quickly. Now, I'm going to start changing a lot between this playthrough and my yellow playthrough. In yellow, the increased difficulty of the late game, especially the Alakazam and Magneton combo, demanded more levels. With a slow growth rate, I went to the hideout to get items so that I could buy more vitamins and have access to one additional rare candy. But for Gyarados in red, I can just skip the hideout entirely. This does result in less money for vitamins, but outspeeding in the mid game to late game isn't as important. I catch myself a Spiro, grab Fly, and backtrack to Vermilion City to face Surge. Voltorb is first. I figured it was going to move first, but nope. Body Slam hits and the Pokeball goes down. Pikachu's next, Body Slam hits it, and it faints. Raichu's last. I move first again, Body Slam takes it to orange, and causes paralysis. Alright, so I ran the damage ranges in yellow, and Thunderbolt was a guaranteed one hit when Gyarados was at this level. But in this game, Surge has good AI, so it's either going to use Thunder Shock or Thunderbolt. He chooses the more powerful attack, and it does so much. But Gyarados survives. And despite the paralysis afflicting me, I'm still faster and I knock the Raichu out on the next turn. Okay, hopefully uh, J-Rose will demote Surge again soon. He really deserves it after this performance. Time to head to Pokemon Tower. I forgot to teach Gyarados Thunderbolt for this fight against the rival, and I wish I had it when he sends out his Gyarados. But it turns out this thing isn't that powerful anyways, and the rival's just bad at this location. That's always the case. Time to face some Ghastly. Gyarados gets confused first turn and then knocks the first one out. But the self-inflicted confusion damage starts to really mess me up. Nightshade hits, and Confusion takes Gyarados into red. Ghastly uses Lick, and I was so scared that it would cause paralysis, but it doesn't occur and I finish her last Pokemon off. Now, I recently talked about so many differences between Pokemon Blue and Yellow in my Nidoran Female video, but one I missed is how the game handles Team Rocket at the top of Pokemon Tower. In yellow you face Jesse and James, but in red and blue you face three rocket grunts, all of which are easy to finish off, but this does take longer to do. Good thing I'm very far ahead of my yellow time. I head to the Safari Zone, grab some vitamins, teach Gyarados Surf, and dig back to Celadon City. I autopiloted for a bit, head south towards Erica's gym, and then I realize that Erica has a victory bell in red that knows Razor Leaf. It loves to crit. She gave me troubles in yellow, so I should do something else first. Like Koga because he should be much easier in red for Gyarados. Coughing is his lead. I go for Ice Beam, it does almost half, Coughing tackles, and Body Slam takes it to red. Koga uses an X attack, which actually makes sense in red, and then I finish it off. Muck's next. I go for Ice Beam, in case it freezes, but it doesn't. Muck disables Body Slam, so I continue to use Ice Beam, and I take it out without any issues. Another coughing follows. Koga just uses a lot of X attacks here and loses his third Pokemon for free. Gyarados levels up and it gets a chance to learn Leer. <laughs> Remember, this move is trash. No thanks. Koga's ace is last, and it's not the flying psychic type Venomoth. It's Weezing. A poison type. How fitting. Surf does a third, Weezing misses Smog, and then uses Toxic, poisoning Gyarados. But my third Surf knocks it out, so I was able to beat Koga at level 31 in just over 25 minutes. Things are going very well. Hopefully I can keep this momentum up. Sylph time. I head to floor 10 to face the rocket guarding the Carbos and Rare Candy. He's going to be my second optional trainer of the playthrough. I think grabbing the Rare Candy is worth it here though. Oh, what is this sprite? Look at its eyes and mouth. 
Ah, oh, oh dear. <laughs> the poor guy. He might have muscles, but that's about it. Because he also has no health now. I head down to floor 5 where I pick up an elixir and fight the mandatory rocket with Arbok. This sprite is pretty bad too. Not nearly as bad as Machoke's, but I don't like it. With it out of the way, I grab the card key and now the path is clear to the Sylph rival. And this is Rival Fival himself, not the cheap knockoff version that I regularly face in yellow. Okay, let's do it. Pidgeot's first. Ice Beam does more than half, Wing Attack hits harder than expected, and then I knock it out. Oh no, it actually quick attacks first, leaving Gyarados with 3 quarters health for the rest of the fight. Time to face the rival's Gyarados. Thunderbolt doesn't knock it out, it goes for Dragon Rage, and that leaves me with only orange health for all that follows. I make the misplay of the run by forgetting to use Surf against Growlithe. At least this thing is awful, so it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter because it just misses Leer and then faints without doing anything. Now it's time for the most dangerous Pokemon on his team, Alakazam. It moves first, takes Gyarados to red with Psybeam, and I use Body Slam, but it doesn't KO or paralyze. So Psybeam knocks me out. That's the first reset. Well, I know that I can do this, let's try again. This time I take the Pidgeot out because Ice Beam freezes it. Gyarados still uses Dragon Rage because of good AI. Then I surf on Growlithe and arrive at Alakazam with significantly more health. But it just goes for Disable and faints without doing anything. Venusaur is last. Ice Beam doesn't do half, Razor Leaf crits, and yikes. I will not survive another one of those. Okay, Ice Beam, let's freeze. But it doesn't, instead it gets a critical hit and Venusaur goes down anyways. Alright, so I got some luck there, it's really nice, let's move on. I don't need Lapras today because Gyarados can learn Surf. Oh yeah, there's uh, no Jesse and James. But there is this guy, but he's just bad. Giovanni has Kangaskhan, which would be even cooler if it was Marowak's final evolution, and a ground type. I dig out of Sylph and head towards Sabrina's gym. On the way I pick up Mimic. I'm not sure I'm going to need this, but I might as well have it just in case. In yellow I fought optional trainers in Sabrina's gym to gain levels, but that seems unnecessary here in red. Kadabra is first and it goes down to a body slam. Next Sabrina sends out, oh this, this right, ah, uh, what is it? Like, like Mr. Vime is the most terrifying Pokemon of all, but this sprite makes it even scarier. I, uh, I need like a Shudder sponsorship for this video now. Actually, uh, please sponsor me. My fiance loves horror movies. On the other hand, I love Venomoth, and this psychic flying type is the perfect fit for Sabrina's team. It starts to cause problems for Gyarados because he uses Stun Spore and paralyzes me. I miss a Body Slam, and as a result, two Psybeams take me to almost half health. Alakazam is last. It goes for Reflect first turn, messing Gyarados' damage up. Psybeam takes me to Orange, and my next Body Slam does the same additionally paralyzing the Alakazam. Okay, I just need better luck now than Sabrina. Psywave hits, and it takes me to 5 hit points. And then Alakazam heals with Recover. Oh no. I bring it back down to red health, but Paralysis makes me miss a few too many turns, and Sabrina defeats me. Well, here's the issue with this fight. Venomoth's Stun Spore is a Grass-type move. Oh, maybe this thing is a Grass Psychic type? Anyways, let's get back to my point. The fact that Stun Spore is a Grass-type move means that Sabrina's AI is forcing her to use it first. After I'm paralyzed, Sabrina switches into damaging moves because she knows that I have a status condition. Luckily, this time it only gets one hit in before it goes down. Alakazam time. It goes for Recover first turn. Excellent choice. <laughs> Psybeam does a surprising amount of damage, and then my Body Slam gets a huge critical hit. So that's it. Sabrina's no more. I head to Pokemon Mansion next, and on the lower level, wild Pokemon can still annoy me even through my repels because Gyarados is at such a low level. But it doesn't seem like Raticate spawn here in red, and they're the ones that are really annoying in yellow version. Let's check the encounter table. Yep, there's no Raticate. The reason they're so annoying in yellow is because they're fast, so they trap slower Pokemon preventing you from escaping. While they've got you, they can use Super Fang to quickly cut your health in half, and then Hyper Fang to flinch or cause devastating damage. Today it's nice for me because I can run away from all the slow poison types here. In Blaine's Gym, I skip all the training that I did in yellow and head straight for the leader. So, how many Super Potions are we going to see today, Blaine? Well, I don't give him a chance to use one on Growlithe because I take it out in one hit. Oh, a critical hit. Nice. Ponyta's next. It's also a one hit, so it's Rapid Ash time. Well, Surf knocks it out too with a single hit. Okay, so no super potions yet. Arcanine's last. 
it moves first because it's 10 levels higher than my Gyarados, but takedown only does a third, and then Surf takes the Fire Doggo into orange. Boom, there's our first super potion. Unfortunately, it wasn't at full health. Also, I've got enough damage to knock it out next turn, so only one super potion today. So I've completed all of the gym leaders except for Giovanni. After arriving in Viridian City, I head north to the gym, but at the door, I get a reminder. Oh yeah, I forgot Erica. Here's another example of me not healing, because I just didn't have any healing items. Probably a bad call not to head back to the Pokemon Center. After all, Erica gave me a lot of problems in yellow. Additionally in red, she's a bit scarier because she starts with Victory Bell. It's quite powerful. It loves to get crits with Razor Leaf. I go for Blizzard, it misses, Victory Bell uses Razor Leaf, and it gets a critical hit. But it doesn't do too much. Gyarados' flying type is useful here for once, making this attack neutral. Next turn, Blizzard hits, and it takes the upgraded Weepin' Bell out in a single hit. Tangle is a one hit, and so is the Vileplume. Now I've defeated seven of the gym leaders, so let's head back to the Viridian City Gym. I've got to talk about Giovanni. He gets made fun of a lot in the Pokemon Challenge community, and he deserves it in red. Like, what is his team? The Rhyhorn is awful. Dugtrio uses Sand Attack, which is like, great, that's not good. But Giovanni's so bad that it doesn't really matter. I can just spam Surf and win. He's not going to be able to defeat me. And yeah, I'm right. I take him out easily. That's it. I don't think I've ever been leaving Giovanni's gym at a time like this. Part of me is starting to worry that Red might have a surprise waiting for me. I might get walled like I did at the Yellow Champion. That fight was so brutal for Gyarados. I had four resets until I got to him and then just everything fell apart at the Magneton. Well, to see how Red compares, first I'll have to make it through the rival before Victory Road. He has an Alakazam, so I need to be careful. First is Pidgeot. I use Blizzard for maximum damage, but it doesn't KO and Pidgeot does a bit of damage with Wing Attack before it faints on turn 2. Next is Rhyhorn. It's bad. That's all there is to say. Surf washes it away. I don't need to worry about it today. Luckily I can break this rhyming scheme and knock his Gyarados out on the next turn with Thunderbolt. He still has a Growlithe for some reason. Yeah, like why does he have a Growlithe? Buy a Firestone, come on. <laughs> ah, maybe he's waiting for Flamethrower. After it faints, he sends out his most intimidating Pokemon, Alakazam. This Generation 1 Beast sets up Reflect right away, but Body Slam crits and almost gets the knockout. Alakazam goes for Psychic next, taking Gyarados to Orange Health, Body Slam hits, and that's it. Venusaur's last. I've got Blizzard specifically for it. It does half, Razor Leaf crits, but Gyarados survives at 3 hit points, and I finish the battle. Alright, that was pretty close, but I was still able to win on my first attempt. Let's proceed. While I'm in Victory Road, I'm just going to mention that I've saved all of my rare candies and I haven't done any training in this playthrough. The two optional trainers that I faced were exclusively so that I could obtain items. Because there's only five battles left in the game, I think that the time for training has passed. I said I was going to wait as long as possible before using the rare candies, and in the cave, wild Pokemon keep popping up because Gyarados isn't a high enough level to repel them. Also, I think it's kind of thematic in this video that I'm not healing, either I'm out of healing items or I forget. In this case, Gyarados is at very low health, and I really don't want to get trapped by an Onix, not be able to escape, and then lose. So yeah, using my rare candies now to avoid wild encounters is probably a good idea. I do save some, I'm going to use them later in the league, hopefully this will give me one more level before the champion. Anyways, without further ado, let's take on Lorelei. The strategy here is simple. I'm just going to use Thunderbolt. It takes care of Dugong in two hits, and the Cloister is no different. Okay, so uh, Slowbro is actually the same too. This is uh, pretty straightforward so far. I use Body Slam against Jinx, and it takes it out in two hits as well. Maybe Lapras will continue the trend and be a two hit, but the Sea Monster has significantly more bulk. Still, it does take half from Thunderbolt. Lapras uses Body Slam. By the way, it would be much scarier if it used Blizzard. However, Lorelei's AI is going to prevent her from doing that. But Body Slam is scary in its own way because it could cause paralysis. The second Thunderbolt takes Lapras to red. It doesn't paralyze, and Lapras uses Body Slam again. No paralysis. Okay, good. I use Thunderbolt one more time, and that's it. Lapras goes down, and the first member of the Elite Four is defeated. This guy. Let's, uh, let's go through the Pokemon. Here's the first one. Surf, one hits. Surf, one hits again on the second Pokemon. Uh, will this continue? Uh, of course it will. His second Onix might be even harder than his first, like look at its level, but Surf doesn't care. It just knocks it out. Finally Machamp. 
the pure muscle Pokemon. Like it has nothing else. Just It's just muscle. Its whole body is made exclusively out of muscle. And I mean that because it uses focus energy, dividing its critical hit chance by four. Yes, this is how this move works in Generation 1. Yeah, so uh, that's a brainless play, because it has no brain, only muscle. After that, it goes for submission against my flying type. I guess I shouldn't criticize the Machamp for all these misplays, because it's really the hiker's fault. Look at him, he has no idea what he's doing. Agatha is the second member of the Elite Four, and she's very different in red. My typical strategy of mimicking Substitute isn't going to work here, because her first Gengar doesn't actually have that move. Instead, I'm going to go on the offensive against her Pokemon right away. Luck is required because she has so many awful status conditions. Surf is doing one third to the first Gengar and Agatha takes inspiration from the last trainer. She is completely ineffective by spamming Dream Eater over and over until Gengar faints. Golbat time. Oh, uh, not this sprite. This has to be one of the worst sprites in the game. Ah, uh, I gotta get it off the screen as fast as possible. I go for Blizzard, but the bat just barely survives. However, it does get frozen. So that's basically a slower one-hit KO. Haunter's next. Alright, this sprite is really good. I love his, like, electrified grin. Once again, the ghost just spams Dream Eater while I knock it out. I'm using Blizzard just in case it freezes, by the way. Arbok's next. For once, Agatha selects a move that does damage. Okay, good job. Please don't be cruel with your final Gengar, though. It goes for Dream Eater. That seems like the theme here, I guess, for the ghosts. Gengar switches things up by using Toxic. And finally hits me with Nightshade before I knock it out. That was an easy Agatha battle. Now, it's time for Lance. Normally, he's the Dragon Master, but today, I'm the Dragon Master because my Pokemon is actually nicknamed Dragon. And it has Thunderbolt, which is going to be very good against Lance's Dragonite. Oh. I guess not quite good enough because it does survive. In retaliation, it strikes with Hyper Beam and it does just more than half. Ouch. I knock it out and move on to the Dragonair. Blizzard is going to be able to manage these. I just hope that I don't miss. My first Snowstorm hits and knocks the Dragon out and so does my second one. Okay, good. It's time for Aerodactyl. This thing is fast, but it's pretty weak unless it uses Hyper Beam. It goes for Takedown instead. Gyarados survives and knocks it out with Blizzard. Last is Dragonite and it takes so much damage from ice moves, so it's an easy one hit. Gyarados is on an absolute tear. It made it through the entire league without a single reset, but that's how it went for yellow as well, and then everything fell apart at the champion. Still, I'm optimistic. I think that I can do it. Pidgeot's first, and its moveset is champion tier perfection. Blizzard doesn't take it out, so we get to witness its dominance. Wing attack does a bit of damage to Gyarados, and then I knock it out. Next is Alakazam. Because I cut training in this run, I can't outspeed. It goes for Psybeam, doing a small amount of damage, and then Hyperbeam takes it out. Right on. Uh, yeah, that's like, don't expect much from it. It's, uh, it's just here because it looks cool. This sprite is certainly better than the one from Yellow. With that out of the way, it's time for the mirror battle. Gyarados vs Gyarados. I might not have one-shot Lance's Gyarados, but I do manage to one-shot the champions. Arcanine is last. This thing has moves that aren't particularly strong, so I just take it out with Surf. Oh, I got a critical hit, that's really nice. Finally, Venusaur's last, and this thing could be the wall that stops me. Blizzard does more than half, okay, this is looking good, and then Venusaur starts to charge Solar Beam. So that's it. Blizzard hits, and I've done it. Gyarados clocks in with a time of 42 minutes and 51 seconds, with two resets at level 56. That's a game time of 2 hours and 46 minutes. For my first Pokemon Red playthrough in a long time, I'm pretty satisfied with these results. After all, this is the shortest playthrough that I have ever done on my channel. For comparison, my best time in Pokemon Yellow with Hypno is a time of 47 minutes and 16 seconds. This was significantly faster. Pokemon Yellow just makes so many of the battles harder for Gyarados, and as a result it requires much more training throughout the mid-game. But what happens if we really optimize things in Pokemon Red? To do this I'm going to be using a program called RBY XP Router. It's linked in the description. I've been working with the developer to turn this into a really awesome solo challenge optimization tool. In the past I've spent sometimes an entire day just testing different battles over and over. Now we have access to exact information because the software keeps track of your experience, stat experience, items, money, and it also calculates damage ranges for every battle in the 
playthrough. Also, if you're a speedrunner and you like using the software Route 1, which is an optimization tool for damage ranges, you can have RBY XP Router output your route to Route 1 and then calculate the most like deep data if you really want that. On my channel, I'll always be doing my first playthroughs blind. That way we get to see me fail and uh, mistype Pokemon like Venomoth and Armaldo. However, for my optimized playthroughs, I'm going to be using as many tools as possible. I just want to get the best possible route for the Pokemon that I can possibly make. Still, this isn't a tool-assisted run, so I can't bank on things like Gen 1 misses and critical hits at key moments. For Gyarados, it can easily beat Brock on minimum battles in Pokemon Red. On Route 3, it's faster to battle the Lass and reset her position than fighting the Bug Catcher. All of this can be done skipping the Pokemon Center until I get to Cerulean City. This is where I heal for the first time. Every time you visit Nurse Joy, it costs around 5 seconds, so I want to minimize the number of times that I have to heal to save as much time as possible. Defeating Misty at level 14 is fine because of Dragon Rage, this gives Bubble Beam, and it just crushes Nugget Bridge. Now, because it's Pokemon Red, I skip the hideout. Surge is the first trainer that's worth considering damage ranges for, so let's go through them. His three Pokemon are lower levels in Red, so Gyarados is actually going to move first against all of them. But with good AI, Raichu is a threat because it's two electric moves. By the way, the Voltorb doesn't even have a single electric type attack. Body Slam is a guaranteed one hit, and it is also on the Pikachu. Raichu's last, and Body Slam is the best move to use against it. It's guaranteed to get a two hit, and if I crit, it'll knock it out in one hit. The issue of course here is Raichu's attacks. Thundershock has a 35% chance to two hit, so that isn't something to worry about. And Thunderbolt has a 36% chance to one hit. Because Gyarados outspeeds, that means I'm only going to get hit once, so there is a 36% chance to lose in this fight. But it only has a 1 in 2 chance to do that. With a Pokemon that takes 4 times damage from electric attacks, I think this is an acceptable margin. Today, I make it through the fight without a reset. With Surge out of the way, my goal is Koga next. Using 6 War Candies before the fight gives Gyarados level 36. This means his first and second coughing are guaranteed 2 hits. There is a 72% chance to 2 hit his muck, but Weezing's probably going to take 3 hits. After all, there's only a 29% chance to 2 hit it. For this video, I use Surf to defeat him, but there is actually a better idea, which is potentially using a Hydro Pump to 1 hit the coughings. However, that isn't my idea. Van Man figured it out when he made his Alakazam vs Gyarados video, which I highly recommend you check out. Link in the description. Defeating Koga gives a speed boost and the ability to use Surf outside of battle. I collect vitamins in the mansion and then defeat Blaine. After all, his red and blue incarnation is probably the worst gym leader in all of Generation 1. This boosts Gyarados special before I head to Sylph for the first time. And I've made it here at level 38, so how does this affect the damage ranges against the rival? Ice Beam or Thunderbolt are doing the same damage to the Pidgeot. They have a 61% chance to one hit. After that, both Growlithe and Execute are guaranteed KOs. Then, it's time for Alakazam, and this is the rival's most powerful Pokémon, and likely the scariest Pokémon Gyarados has to face in the entire playthrough. Body Slam has a 46% chance to one-hit. It's really unfortunate that it isn't guaranteed. Today, I do get it though. Last is Blastoise, and now I want to mention why I chose it instead of facing Charizard or Venusaur. Obviously, Charizard should be the easiest, right? Well, that's not actually the case. Charizard turns out to be the most challenging opponent for Gyarados to face because of its moves. With Blastoise, it's actually the easiest. I figured this out on my second attempt with Gyarados in red, and that's when I faced Charizard because I wanted to make it easier instead of facing Venusaur, and it ended up being much harder. In the end, because Gyarados has access to Thunderbolt, Blastoise ends up being the easiest Pokemon to face. Van Man also figured this out, and he talks about it more in depth in his video, so again, check it out. At level 41, Gyarados is ready for Erika. I fight only the mandatory trainer and then I crush her team. At level 41, Ice Beam is the best move and it has guaranteed one hits. Sabrina is immediately next without any intervening battles. Gyarados outspeeds all of her Pokemon with the exception of Alakazam. Body Slam always one hits the Kadabra, but Mr. Mime can survive and today it gets a lucky critical hit with Confusion. This is its only psychic move, so that's the worst luck I could get on the first turn. Real issue in this fight though is the Venomoth, because it loves to use Stun Spore as it's a grass type move. Because of Sabrina's good AI, it's always going to use it right away. But the luck reverses here and Gyarados gets a critical hit. Without it, I'd be going into the battle against Alakazam paralyzed. Still, I don't outspeed, so I have to survive a minimum of 2 hits from this potent psychic type. Luckily in red it only knows Psybeam and Psywave. 
plus Body Slam can paralyze, and it does here. So while this is an inconsistent fight, I emerged today with no resets. Ah, uh, look at this. Giovanni is trash. Okay, let's move on. The rival right before the league isn't a challenge. On his team, the most worrying Pokemon is still the Alakazam. It's a two hit with Body Slam, and then Blastoise is also a two hit with Thunderbolt. Before Lorelei, I teach Gyarados Mimic and then use two rare candies. These optimize where Gyarados levels up. If I use two now and two before Agatha, then Gyarados levels up right after Lorelei's Lapras, Bruno's Machamp, Agatha's second Gengar, and Lance's Dragonite. So I've made it all the way to the champion without any resets. Once again, all of his Pokemon are exceptionally easy for Gyarados to take out, including the Alakazam this time, because I now have Hyper Beam, so I get the one hit. Because of that, I take an easy victory, and Gyarados clocks in with a time of 40 minutes and 33 seconds at level 55 with no resets. All of this took 2 hours and 41 minutes of game time. So I improved my results by just under 3 minutes. I am blown away by how much easier red version is when compared with yellow. Gyarados is almost 15 minutes faster through the game. Granted, its starting moveset is largely to blame. In yellow, when Gyarados started with only Tackle, uh, check this video out if you want to see that, it lost 11 minutes of time just defeating Brock. However, yellow demanded a more intricate plan for the mid and late game, and the champion's Magneton was a serious threat, even with Earthquake. In red version, there's no Pokemon that had that kind of dominance. Alakazam had the potential to mess things up occasionally, but that was only if I got unlucky with Paralysis on Sabrina, or if it crit when I was fighting the rival. Like, subscribe, bring the Chimeco, and comment because I gotta read them all. Thanks to all my patrons for their support, and if you've made it this far, you're incredible. See you in my next video.